Hello, so I'm Richard, and today I'm going to show you a feature I've been working on in local AI, which is uh, a vector search um, and an API for storing and retrieving vectors, which um, commonly you uh, take some embeddings, which are represented as a vector, and then you do um, a cosine similarity search to find embeddings with similar um, properties or do a semantic search is another way of saying it. Um, I've implemented a very, very simple vector storage and search backend in local AI, but the idea is that you can take any vector database or whatever and um, use it to implement this API. Um, so what have we got? Uh, on the left left here we've got uh, like the HTML, uh, sorry, HTTP uh, definition for the um, endpoints. So you've got a set, delete, find, and get. Uh, so like your standard key value store type methods, except for find, which is what actually performs the um, cosine similarity search. And, you know, this usually local AI um, implements uh, the API for, say, um, open AI. Or you can see there's some other providers here now, like Eleven Labs, um, and it implements these APIs using open source models. Um, in this case, this is just uh, an API I've invented. Um, but the idea is eventually that we'll have um, the full assistance API implemented, and part of that uh, assistance API is uh retrieval so retrieval augmented generation rag and uh, one way you can do that is using vector search um there's other ways to do it and this is perhaps not the best way but we're going to support it anyway um okay so i've created a little uh demo application um which you know shows how this works if i go yeah semantic to do okay so it's a little text user interface application written in go which like follows the standard to do pattern um i haven't implemented everything but it lets you add and search for um to do items uh, using semantic search and it's 352 lines of code which in Go is pretty good because it's quite verbose. Um, so first of all let's start up local AI which will run in a docker image. Um, it's a custom image I've built. And in here we have um, one of the BERT backends which is loaded a popular embedding model and that will provide embeddings for us. Um, and it also has the stores backend, which I've created, which is um, created on demand and doesn't require any configuration at the moment. Uh, okay, so now we've got that running. Now we can run the uh, Go application. And you can see here it's already generating some embeddings because I've got I pre-populate a few uh, tasks into the database um, okay and we've got some stuff here like we can add add a new task um, so like I've just started relearning Vim and Neo Vim again Okay, so we've added that and you can see that it's created the embeddings. Um, something to note is that 
I'm running this all on my laptop CPU. I don't have, uh, well, I don't know how great the graphics card is in my laptop for AI, but you know, it works fine on CPU for this application. Okay, and then we can add then we can add another one. Sorry, that's the wrong key. Let's add a new task. Um sorry, no, hold on. No. If we search for remember the key bindings. Okay. Now it's performed the similarity search and the most similar item to remember the key bindings is learn NeoVim, which makes sense. <laughs> um, it's quite satisfying when you get some some kind of hit like that. Um, but yeah, it's cosine similarity search based on embeddings is not that great, but as like a first approximation, it does a reasonable job. And you can easily combine it with keyword keyword search and other simple types of search. So it's not the best search by a long distance, but you can do it fully on CPU. And, you know, it's just a relatively simple way to get started. So let's have a quick look at the code. Um, as I said, I'm currently learning NeoVim again. I got bored of just using Emacs, so anyway. So, yeah. So, I mean, this, this the only libraries I'm using here are the T-cell and T-view libraries, which are what produce the um, text user interface. So, we just use, like, Go's built-in standard library to to query the API. There are um, like various libraries you can use with local AI because it's because it's mostly um, open AI compatible, but we're just using the just using the the HTTP library. So you could cut down on some of the verbosity here. Um, so yeah, we've got a, got a function which just fetches the embedding for some text. Um, and then we have this like appallingly named um, function here, which takes the um, the the vector embedding or uh, I should say that the the whole API is column orientated, so you don't just post one key; you post an array of keys and a matching array of values. Um, this is just based on the observation that most most vector databases also use a columnar format by default. It just seems to be the standard way of doing things. I don't particularly like it, but it does have some interesting performance properties um, when you do columns or you do arrays of the same type of um, the same uh, data type rather than having like an array of structs with mixed types in. But never mind. Um, so you can post that to the post that to the um, HTTP API, uh, the stores set endpoint, and that will add it to the database. Um, and then we've got a definition for the stores find endpoint, where you just submit a single key and the number of results you want. Uh, and it returns um, a column of keys and a column of their matching values and a column of similarities. So if you want to ignore results with um, a similarity less than a certain value, you can do that. Or if you just want to see what the similarities are out of interest, 
you can do that as well. There's no real guarantee that the um, the figures returned in the similarities will, will make a lot of sense. That's just something to be aware of, because obviously currently there's just one back end and it always uses cosine similarity, but potentially you can have different similarity metrics and blah, blah, blah. So this isn't necessarily something you can rely on too much. Possibly in the future we could add um, like some other parameter here so it only returns results with a certain confidence. But yeah, presently that's just what, what we have there. Okay, again. Okay, and then we have the actual UI code which takes up a fair chunk of code. Um, and it just you know, calls the previous functions and updates the uh, UI. And that's it, basically. That's that's the whole application. Okay. Um, okay, and then maybe a bit more in the implementation. So, what have we got here? Okay, that's a binary file. What do I want? client okay so internally we have another api because in local ai uh, each back end is an independent process which we communicate to with grpc um, and for stores i created a um, wrapper for the grpc back end which um you know just creates just uh just wraps you know the um the structures that the grpc backend uses and just you know so you can just make regular function calls and does some checks on you know that stuff and add some documentation so internally the http api uses this api and um the assistance api will potentially use this api as well uh, as well as other possible backends as well, such as uh, uh, Colbert v2, uh, which doesn't work anything like this, or so I, so I'm led to believe. Um, okay, yeah. So you can see, like, we've got the usual backend interface, um, what we already have there. So that's so. This endpoint here would get fetch our embeddings from the um, in embeddings implementation. Uh, currently, I'm using the um, BERT CPP backend, but there's other possibilities there. Uh, you got the predict backend, which is like the um, pre-chat era way of working with large language models um you know, stuff like you know generate image and so on um then we've got the new stores endpoints so um so basically yes then we have another process which uh runs um independently of the main process and communicates with grpc and the actual implementation of the store is here um so yeah this this is where the magic happens and actually it's not too big it's 507 lines of code um we have two different implementations for find um i don't know if this is the correct way of doing things this is just how i happen to be doing it now we have stores find normalized um which is the quicker one so this um performs the cosine similarity search which i only do cosine similarity search uh, because it appears to be the most robust um, 
there's there's like loads of like huge huge wealth of research and stuff out there talking about the different metrics you can use and but you know basically people like default to cosine similarity search and i'm not going to be an exception here um if you need more flexibility then i think really the answer is to add like uh, a fully featured uh, database or something at least for the time being so when we do a normalized find um all we basically do is um loop over the vector and take the dot product and that's it and this this is this can be optimized very easily um we could replace this with some uh like vector code using assembly now unfortunately go doesn't seem to have this built in uh some libraries for it but unlike languages like um in in c you have like automatic loop and rolling and stuff which automatically vectorizes your code and uh, in rust and zig you have um explicit vectorization instructions unfortunately go doesn't seem to have that which actually seems a bit strange to me but whatever um we could either call out to to like a nat uh a language like zig or we could um just write some assembly here for the platforms we care about but yeah currently don't bother doing that and actually um this is fast enough unless you have millions or tens of millions of um vectors to compare um and then as a fallback we've got um a full uh, cosine similarity search which um i guess in theory is considerably considerably slower unfortunately it seems like this particular the particular embeddings i'm using are not normalized i'm not really sure whether to normalize them or just to leave it as it is whatever um that's all optimization stuff but the basic point here is that it's relatively little code i currently i don't save anything to disk uh, i did have a badger db version which um serialized everything straight away or persisted everything straight away but i mean you could, we could also just save everything to a file a flat file i mean this is never going to be a full vector database um being simple has its advantages uh not having to manage state between restarts has its advantages um you know if you just if you use a real database to store your data and then generate the embeddings at runtime it means you can just switch between embeddings uh whenever you want um you just pay the the startup cost and uh, you can use like a real database or a database you're used to to do the usual database stuff um and if you need to like do some hybrid query then you can just do that in code once you've fetched the the vector embeddings and that's it goodbye